You know, I think that that um, you know, a lot of individuals have a lot of views and opinions about the philosophy as to whether or not what role the city government should pay uh, or should play inside of a, a community or a city. But um, it's always interesting to hear various different in individuals' philosophy or their view as to as to what that role is, and whether or not the government or policymakers should have any type of input any whatsoever. And um, I would be afraid because I've had an opportunity to to hear some of the views and under the models of what individuals' logic and thinking is, uh, if government had not played some common role in in guiding and identifying how the city was going to grow, how any city was going to grow, I'd be afraid of uh, what that would be because we would still be in covered wagons and horses. Uh, there would be no change and uh, because the stance is, is let's not do anything. Just don't do anything. Hands off. Just let it happen. So if, if society, if technology and everything just go off and leave you behind, that's okay. Just don't do anything. And, uh, you know, I just thank God we have individuals that have enough gumption to step forward and say, I'm willing to make a change. I'm willing to make a difference. I'm willing to improve the community. Because they don't want to acknowledge the fact that, that improving the quality of life, improving the various different things, improving bringing in businesses, cleaning up streets, cleaning up neighborhoods, doing those things, helping individuals feel good about themselves. They don't want to acknowledge that those types of things are important and those types of things, there's no way that you can assess or put a dollar amount to it. And those types of, not everyone has that luxury to live around a lake or, or be able to walk out in their backyard or, or have someone come and manicure their lawn for them. Not everyone has that opportunity. Most have to do that themselves. But they want an environment, and they, sometimes you have to have individuals to come in and to help you. And, and I think that this is one of those things that, that's going to provide that. This community was a healthy, thriving community when I was a kid in high school. I used to go and eat pizza after football games, and, and all the high school students would go and celebrate. But just like anything else, things become old. Individuals move on. They're forgotten in time. Maybe the city didn't make the investments that they should have back then, and they walk off and they leave it. So now we have somebody that's interested in trying to revive, trying to revive it and trying to do something a little different, trying to instill pride in the neighborhood, trying to create an environment where it's enticing for individuals to want to come back there or enticing for individuals to want to live there. So, you know, I must commend those individuals for doing that. But... If we say we start today and say that we, want us, we don't want to start taking care of communities, then tomorrow we'll be saying we don't want more technology. And then the following day we'll be saying we don't want public safety. And it won't take us very long to get back to where we were at back when the city first settled. So I think that this is something that's a, that's a good venture. It's a good thing for the community. We've heard from the community. We've seen the actions of the community. We've saw it on the news what these communities are doing because they know that there's light at the end of the tunnel. We've seen it on the news. They've re been reporting it in the media what this particular community has been doing and what others around it. And you know what? The city partnered with them to help them generate this kind of energy and this type of excitement and this type of pride. So. I think this is, this is something that's good, and I know that there's going to always be people that are going to be naysayers that, you know, they're just not going to be happy. And I don't want you to let this to, to discourage you, and I don't want the comments that have been heard today to discourage the citizens of those neighborhoods and them to continue doing the good, great work that they're doing and to continue to have faith and to continue that there is light at the end of the tunnel and that there is a value. It just can't be measured of having pride in your community and pride in your neighborhood. And yes, we do have a role to be able to help those individuals trying to help themselves. Councilman Williams. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, I do agree with uh, the comments that the mayor has made. And I did hear the comments that there are other shopping centers that are in greater need uh, than I um, would appeal to the public 
um, that they also step up to the plate and take on the responsibility of trying to improve that shopping center that is close to you. Um, I appreciate the fact that, um, that the public has decided that this is something that we need to do for this community and that that will enhance and bring in uh, other people uh, and other retail into this area. It's a much, much needed area. Uh, the potholes probably in that, um, in that shopping center, I, I almost think that Chris Carrier is bringing all the potholes from the city to put them right in that little parking lot. Uh, they are that bad. Uh, so this is something that is desperately, desperately needed. And if there are no other comments, I'd like to go on and make a motion. Any other comments? I move that we close the public hearing and place the ordinance on first reading. Second. Heard the motion. It's been properly second. Questions? Press the button. Yes, you did. Prepare the ballot. Cast your vote. I'm clerk display for the record. Okay. Motion carries uh, 5 1 with uh, Council Member Gray abstaining. I'm clerk, next item.